dear viewers, and welcome back to our show, Diet Myths. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, and it's the worst diet tips you can hear and even follow. So I'm sure many of you have talked to your friends, your family members, your colleagues, maybe even some nutritionists and dietitians out there, and you've asked them what diet tips they can give you because you want to lose fat, weight fast, and we all want to lose our weight fast. But some of these diet tips are actually really bad and they could backfire and you could be ending up gaining so much more weight than you actually had on. So it's very important for you to consider who you talk to when you want to follow these diet tips and whether these diet tips really make sense to you or not. So what we're going to do today is cover some diet tips that are very popular. We've heard a lot about them and we're going to sit down and debunk them one by one and you'll realize they don't even make sense to you. So the first one that I want to talk about is go gluten free. With the growing trend of gluten free diets, it has a lot of people wondering, what the heck is it? More importantly, should you be eating it? Simply put, gluten is a combination of two proteins found primarily in wheat and related grains like barley and rye. That's it. It's just protein. These two proteins called gliadin and gluten and combine, creating gluten, which helps to nourish the plant's embryos and is a major component in giving the foods you eat that chewy goodness. It's kind of like glue. It makes dough stretchy and gives bread its sponge-like properties. So why is it so bad? Well, it's not. In fact, it's neither detrimental or essential for your health. And there's very little evidence to suggest that cutting it out is the healthier choice for the average person. On the other hand, those with a chronic digestive disorder called celiac disease aren't able to eat gluten at all, and this is where some confusion may have stemmed from. If consumed, a celiac's body sees gluten as an invader and triggers an immune response which ends up damaging the small intestine. Too much of this, and their body begins to suffer major nutritional deficiencies. More recently, scientists have recognized another small proportion of the population that aren't celiac but still have gluten sensitivity. That is, they suffer similar symptoms after eating gluten like cramps, diarrhea, and bloating. In both of these cases, gluten-free food options are essential. But if you don't suffer from either, there isn't much weight to the other health claims of gluten-free diets. It's in no way a toxin as some may suggest, and gluten-free doesn't necessarily mean that food is more natural, healthier, or lower in calories. How many times have you heard people say, oh, the gluten-free diet will help you lose weight, and look at how much weight I've lost on the gluten-free diet? That's not necessarily true. Gluten right now is the substance found in wheat, and it's actually the protein in wheat. And some people have an allergy or an intolerance to this gluten. And these people might end up losing weight once they stop consuming gluten. And usually when they have this gluten and they're intolerant to it, they become bloated and very tired all the time. But if you're not gluten intolerant, you don't have to stop it and you don't have to completely cut out wheat. As we know, wheat in our diet, and especially whole grains and whole wheat, give us a lot of vitamins and minerals and nutrients that we actually need. So sometimes, when you do cut it out, you become nutrient deficient, and we don't want that. So the correct choice to make is always choose whole wheat or whole grain options, and choose things that say 100% whole wheat or 100% whole grain. And once you choose these items, and of course limit the portion to the correct portion, which will be about a quarter of your plate, you will be losing weight and you can still have your favorite wheat or gluten products. Now stay tuned because we're going to come back and talk about the rest of our worst diet tips that you could possibly follow. So let's look back at more of these diet tips that are really bad for you and we definitely do not want you to follow them. The second one I'm going to be talking about is go and work out on an empty stomach or start your day on an empty stomach. Now that's the worst thing you can do, especially when you're working out and you're trying to build muscle and you know burn off these calories. On the contrary, we actually do want you to be consuming foods before you hit the gym or before you go to work out, even if it's a slight jog. And you can always have something light, like you know, a small fruit, a small orange, a small apple, or like a medium banana. 
But working out on an empty stomach is the worst thing you could be doing for yourself. Because as you're working down, your muscles will probably break down and you don't have any energy to feed these muscles. So you actually start breaking them down and losing everything you've been working so hard to build. So never do anything on an empty stomach. We always, you know, refer to this at here at the Sman Diabetes Institute. We always tell people, make sure you consume your meals and make sure you, you feel full after your meal. Because that by the time like the next meal comes around, you know, we don't want you to be really starving or really hungry that you'll eat everything around you. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Consume your meals, never go anywhere on an empty stomach. Now the next thing that I want to talk about and a lot of people like to do it is you know what? I'll eat healthy all week. I'll be good with my food, I'll be good with my diet all week, and on the weekends I can have free meals. There is nothing called a free day. You cannot continue your entire weekend on free meals because you'll just be gaining all the weight you've been trying so hard to lose all week. Instead, follow the 80% 20% rule. Make 80% of your food really good, really healthy, and then 20% of your food can be some indulgent. And you could have it during the weekday, as long as you know you exercise after, work out, and actually burn off all these excess calories you're having. Don't you know go crazy on the weekend thinking you can have an entire day of whatever you want, because you could be ruining everything you've been working hard for. Now we've got a few more tips, so we want you guys to stay tuned, and we'll be back. Now before we wrap up this episode of these worst diet mistakes that you could be making, we've got two more tips to cover for you. So one of them is a very popular one, and if you do it right, you could be losing weight. But a lot of us find it very difficult to do it right, and that's eating every two hours. You know, if you do eat every two hours, yes, maybe it will keep you full all day, and you don't feel like you're starving and you want to binge eat at a certain meal. but you need to really limit the portion size when you're eating every two hours because it can easily go wrong and you can easily be consuming extra calories when you're actually trying to reduce the amount of calories you have. So maybe instead of eating food every two hours, you can make sure you have a warm hot drink every two hours. A glass of green tea, a glass of maybe peppermint tea, some chamomile tea. These are fluids that you're putting in your body, which you need, and sometimes these hot fluids help you feel a little more full. They don't curve off the hunger. If you are hungry, you will need to eat, but sometimes when we get these signals mixed up, these hot drinks can actually save off some calories that we don't want you to have. And now the last thing I want to talk, of, talk about is something that many people do, and it's swear off forbidden foods. You know, I love cake so much, that's it. I'm gonna go on a diet, and I'm never gonna have cake again, or I'm never gonna have rice again. And that's completely wrong. When you swear off these foods, you get to a point where one day, you just wanna go crazy and have them all. On the contrary, have everything you want, but within small portions. Count the amount of food you're consuming. Again, follow the 80%, 20% rule. You know what, if I've been good all day and I've had like whole grains and you know my lean protein and lots of vegetable and fruit throughout my day, maybe I can get away with a small chocolate bar. So think of these things when you're looking at your diet and when you're considering making changes and wanting to lose weight. Because we all want to lose weight, but it's very important for it to be consistent and for it to be something that you can follow in the long run. We don't want you to do something, you know, crazy and like not you and something that you can't follow and then one day just fall off the bandwagon. So try to be, you know, very reasonable with your diet and try to look at things in a greater picture. And this way you will be losing weight. And if you ever want to consider speaking to someone about weight loss, always speak to a dietitian. Now I really hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you guys next time.